Hi everyone and welcome to my channel Babbling Books. If it's your first time here, my name is Elaine. So this is going to be my first ever just chatty video. Um, I always wanted to do one of these, but I never um, really felt like I'd come across um, the right idea yet. But last night when I was um, scrolling through um, some different booktubers I like to watch, I saw this book tag called a uh, reading taste tag at um, Lauren and the Books and I watched it and I was intrigued and I decided that I was going to give it a try. So this basically is where you answer eight questions discussing your taste in books. So question number one is describe your reading taste in one sentence. I had the most horrible time trying to do this. Everything I wrote it didn't feel like it encompassed enough. And then it was either cheesy um, or like a cliche. And so I really sort of just settled on this sentence. And that is, um, I enjoy any book that takes me away to faraway planets, battlefields, ballrooms, or high schools. I mean, and that really does sum up a lot of my reading taste. Um, I sort of feel like I'm all over the place. And really all it takes to get me interested in a book is for it to be well written and for me to be interested in the material or in the story or in the character. I'm definitely more of a character um, driven reader. Um, so yeah. Uh, question two is describe your reading taste with categories. So character driven reader, um, books about women, uh, periods in time. So that would be like um, a book that talks just all about different aspects of like the Victorian era or the Regency era um, or, you know, things like that. And then um, books about specific countries, um, nonfiction, books about food, books that have humor, uh, books with badass characters and books that are like atmospherically creepy. Those are all things that I enjoy as well as extreme environments. So books that take place in space, um, deep, deep, you know, in the ocean, um, in deserts or uh, the frozen tundra, like all of those kinds of things are very intriguing to me. Um, show a few books that represent your reading taste. That's question number three. Um, so the first one here is The Secret Lives of Color. I saw this on Jen Campbell's page, oh, quite a few years ago. Um, I will link her um, channel down in the description. So I actually had to have this sent from England because I couldn't get it here. And I'm really, really glad that I did. Besides the fact that it's absolutely beautiful. Um, this is a good representation of my enjoyment of sort of odd or quirky nonfiction. So this book basically is broken up by like the color palette and it gives you the history of the color. And you know, that's something that we sort of take for granted um, in modern times, but you know, not really that long ago in some aspects, certain colors were not available to everybody and they didn't exist either. So, you know, you, pick a color um, like Dutch orange, for instance, and you learn about how it was discovered, when it was discovered, and how it is made, um, and different little oddball bits of history about each color. So that one's a good representation of my enjoyment on just odd history things. Um, Trouble with Women. This is a good example of my sense of humor as well as my enjoyment of reading about women. So this is sort of a, a parody or a sarcastic little comment about all of the things that they have said about women throughout history. Like for instance, there's this picture of this woman here with this tiny little head and you know, she's sitting next to this other person um, and they're studying. And it says, women were occasionally allowed to study, but not to get a degree in anything because of their small heads. And, you know, women having small heads was used as an excuse to why, you know, women couldn't learn anything, why they couldn't get an education because their heads were too small, meaning their brains were too small, meaning they were too dumb. So, um, 
like this one here, it says, it wasn't until the 1960s that women were allowed to uncross their arms, even, <laughs> even then only in emergencies. Yeah, so this is a good representation of my sense of humor. Um, and then we have Honor Splendor by Julia Garwood. Um, I love a good historical romance and I enjoy a good Highlander romance. And I think this is much, much better um, than Outlander, for example. Um, you know, sometimes you just need to curl up with a cup of coffee and a blanket and a cat on your lap and you need to be transported you know, back through the centuries into Scotland with a guy who has a broadsword and a broadsword. Very good. Enjoyable. Um, A World Undone. So I enjoy reading um, about military history. I enjoy reading about um, world history. I enjoy reading about a specific period in time, 1914 to 1918. And I really just enjoy learning. Um, and I don't know if you can tell. And I also enjoy annotating my nonfiction books. Um, so, you know, that's pretty straightforward. And then we have Purple Hibiscus by Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie. So, this represents, I love reading books about women, um, general fiction, familial relationships, women of color. Um, and this just covers all of those different categories. Um, I don't know. There's just something about, you know, I, I, I enjoy books with male characters as well, but I really enjoy books about uh, mother and daughters and just the many different ways that women have lived and live. Um, so yeah. And oops, excuse me. And then we have, oh, Cressley Cole's book. So this is a book from the Immortals After Dark series. And this represents my absolute love for urban fantasy and urban fantasy romance, um, alpha male romance, badass characters, humor, um, just all the good things. And these, in my opinion, are some of the absolute best faded made alpha romance books available. Um, the men are not abusive because that's, I don't like that. Um, and these women do not take crap lying down. They are armed and they are fully capable of chopping your head off if that's what they think they need to do. So I love that. Um, yeah, just so good. <laughs> um, and then, then question four is a book you didn't like that it seems like you would. Okay, so I tried to read Finley Donovan is Killing It by L. Casamano. I could not get into this. Um, it sounds like something I would love. Um, absurd comedy, uh, main character, seems like at some point she had the potential to become badass. Um, she's a mom. But I didn't like anything about these. I didn't like the main character. I didn't think they were funny. Um, and to be honest, these reminded me so much of the Stephanie Plum series, but I didn't think they were as good. So this one was a big no for me, but you would have thought that I would have loved it. I was really excited to read it, but I ended up DNFing it, I think about halfway through because I was just bored. Um, a book you enjoyed that you didn't think would be to your taste. Um, where did I put it? Where? Oh, it fell. Excuse me. And I'm back. Okay. So this is Kissing the Witch by Emma Donahue. Um, I saw this book on Jen Campbell's page, oh, five or six years ago. And it was the first, first short story collection that I ever tried. And I believe it was the first um, romance that I ever read between female characters. I loved this. I sat down to read this right after my kids went to sleep. And I kid you not that I did not get up again until I'd finished it. I mean, and it's not a huge book, but it's not tiny either. 
And when I was done, I started it over again because I had read it so fast because I was so involved with it um, that when I was done, I, I knew that there were things that I had missed and I needed to read it again. Um, so yeah, I really didn't think I was going to enjoy this. I had always scoffed at short stories. Um, turns out I was an absolute fool. So yeah, this one was absolutely fantastic. And I, I enjoyed knowing that I could read, um, a romance that maybe I necessarily couldn't relate to in a certain sense, but at the same time, you know, love is love and romance is romance. And so I was, I thought that was pretty nifty to see that. So, you know, that's never, you know, stopped me before. Um, and then the next question is on a different page. Oh, books on your TBR that show your personal taste. Okay. So we have Frontier Women. Um, I like time, reading about certain uh, times in history. Um, so the times of the Old West, the frontier, the pioneers, as well about the lives of women. Um, so that covers pretty much both of those categories for me. And then we have Dark Run by Mike Brooks. So we have um, space travel. Um, we have some Maybe not horror, but definitely some creepy atmospheric vibes with this one. Badass characters. Oh, and I also love me some rebellious rebel characters. Um, so science fiction in a lot of cases is really just chock full of all the stuff that I love. So I'm looking forward to that one. Oh, and the prettiest. So lately I have been enjoying reading middle grade books that focus on female characters. Um, I'm not really certain why, but I think it's probably because my daughter's getting older and we have a lot of discussions. And um, so that's sort of like a headspace that I've been in recently. So I'm really enjoying um, books about girls in middle school or high school. And they have decided that they are going to stand up for themselves. Um, they are going to get in trouble if that's what it takes, but they are tired of whatever situation or treatment they have been on the receiving end of, and they're done. So really enjoying that. And then Memphis by Tara M. Stringfellow. Um, I saw this. I want to say this one was on Jen Campbell's page. Um, this book focuses on multiple generations of females in a family, um, women of color, and I definitely got some badass vibes, not in the sense of, you know, you know, they're like, you know, cat burglars or anything, but in the sense of um, female strength. Um, so this is just a, a good representation of the kind of things that I enjoy with my general fiction. And then we have this huge thing. Um, so this is a history of Iran. Now I know it says a modern history, but considering how long um, we go back, how we how far back Iran goes, um, a modern history is still covers multiple um, different centuries. Oh yeah, chapter three is 1666. Um, so yeah, I, I love reading books about, um, a country. It's almost sort of like, um, when you read about them, it's like watching them blossom from infancy to childhood. And, um, you know, the world is a lot smaller of a place than it used to be. And I have not been able, I have not been able to travel, um, as much as I would like. I've been, I've only been out of the country once. And so this is sort of my way of expanding my mind with um, knowledge of other cultures and other people um, and the history of other um, nations because, you know, I really do think that is something that a lot of Americans need to work on. Um, now, there's some Americans that have traveled all over the world, um, but at least with people that I know, the majority of us have, you know, if we've left the country, it's, you know, Canada, Mexico, 
Um, not that there's anything wrong with those places, but we're not as well traveled as a lot of our um, European counterparts, for instance. Um, so yeah, so I like reading about uh, countries. And then I think we are on, oh, <laughs> question seven, a booktuber with similar tastes. So this one was a little difficult for me. Um, so what I'm going to say, and I've already mentioned them so many times already, um, Jen Campbell, she has a lot of sort of oddball, quirky, um, little books that kind of fit in their own little niche um, recommendations. So I really do like her channel um, as well as she does great um, short story recommendations and general fiction recommendations. And then um, Lauren in the books. Um, she's a delight to watch anyway. She is so just warm and cozy. Um, she's my favorite to watch when I, um, when I'm like washing the dishes or I'm doing housework because it's like having a friend over and listening to him chat while you work. Um, but she does a lot of really good, um, recommendations about books with food, um, and also general fiction, a lot of books about women. So I really enjoy her channel a lot as well. And then, um, Russell at Ink and Paper Blog is probably the third that I watch the most. Um, he probably has, um, Jen Campbell's very good with diversity too, as is Lauren. Um, but I think Russell just does a tiny bit more. So I enjoy his channel a lot as well. Um, and then the last question is, has my taste changed? Well, yes and no. So when I, <clears throat> excuse me, my first adult reading experiences were with historical romance. And then I branched out to reading some classics, but I had to read them for school, found that I enjoyed them and sort of went out on my own and found some more. And then for some reason that I do not remember, I had like a year long obsession with reading um, memoirs and autobiographies about Vietnam vets and their time in Vietnam. And it's sort of everything just kind of grew from there. Science fiction has been something I've only been reading for maybe the past four or five years. Um, but everything is kind of interconnected, you know, uh, so I might have read, you know, the Vietnam memoirs, but now I read a lot of different types of military history. So, yes, it's changed in the sense that I've added a lot more, um, a lot more genres, um, to my personal taste. And I really think that's it. I can't think of anything that I dropped completely. Um, I probably read a lot less romance than I used to. Um, for me, romance is more of I need a comfort read or too much stuff is going on. I can't really concentrate. So I will listen to or read an old favorite um, in the romance genre. Um, so yeah, so that's it. That is my first ever chatty book tag. Um, so, you know, let me know what you guys thought. If you would like to see any more of these, um, or if there's a certain book tag that you would like for me to do. Um, I think I'm, when I'm done filming this, I think I'm going to get on Google and see if I can find some, um, book tag ideas and do a few more of these. Um, so that's it. So thank you very much for clicking on my channel. Bye.